Hi everyone, I just wanted to say really quickly that whilst I was editing this video, I realised that I look really miserable. <laughs> I am really sorry. Um, I wasn't very well through most of January and I think just by the end of the month I'd had both the children at home and we were in lockdown and homeschooling and I was just really tired. <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that, but spring is on the horizon i can feel it and um i'm definitely feeling a lot more positive so i promise my next video will be a lot more upbeat and smiley i hope you enjoy my make nine and i'll hopefully see you soon <laughs> I'm Ruth. Welcome to my channel, So Dysfunctional. I hope you're all well. We are in the middle of lockdown three here in the UK, so life has been very busy. I am homeschooling and I've got a toddler as well, so I haven't really had any time to sew recently. But what I have been doing is making some plans. So this year I've decided to do a make nine. So I've pretty much decided on nine patterns. There's one that I'm just not quite sure about, but I thought I would show you what I'm hoping to make in 2021. And also some fabric choices that I might use for those projects. So the first thing I'm planning to make, and this will kind of hopefully go across the year, is underwear. Um, specifically pants. So I have got the Megan Nielsen Acacia pants or knickers pattern. I can't remember whether she calls them pants or knickers doesn't really matter. Um, you can get that, it's free, you can get it from her website if you sign up to the newsletter. Um, and I think she redid the file recently, so there are, there's a much bigger size range um, available, which is great. I've also bought the Made by Jack's Mum superhero boxes, um, intending to make some for my husband. Now they do take a bit more fabric, um, as you might expect, um, but I think it's only about half a metre. So those patterns are cut out um, and ready to go and hopefully I shall start making some of those soon because they should be relatively quick. I have got three top patterns on my list for my Make Nine this year. Um, the first one is here, it is the Deer and Doe Bruyere shirt. Um, I bought this a long, long time ago, it was one of the first independent patterns that I bought. I didn't know anything about Deer and Doe or most other independent pattern companies at that point. But I just really, really loved the shape of the um, pleats in the front and the back. It's going to involve quite a bit of pattern fiddling, I think, because I'm going to need to do various adjustments. And I run across a few of their sizes um, when it comes to bust to waist hip ratio in deer and doe. So that will probably be quite an involved make. I will definitely have to do a mock-up of that, at least one I'd imagine. But the fabric I'm hoping to make a sort of final garment out of is this. Now this is embroidery on glaze that I bought from Felicity Fabrics last year. When it comes to practicality, I've now realized, A, this is not a practical color to wear when you have two small grubby children. Um, and also, obviously it's got um, little holes in it so if I'm making a shirt out of it I'm either going to need to line it with something or just make sure that I'm wearing like a strappy top underneath it which I hope won't spoil the look of it but do let me know if you've made shirts out of this kind of fabric and what you've done whether you've lined the main body of the shirt or whether you've just left it and worn it over something underneath and it's looked okay and also I'm going to need to do something with the collar, aren't I? I have not thought of that. Let me know if you've got any good ideas. I might have to change my mind on the fabric choice for that one. And running along the shirt theme, I have also bought this pattern, the Fairfield button-up um, shirt, which is by Thread Theory Patterns. Um, this was another one that I saw, I think, on Instagram. Various people have made it and said it's, it's a good pattern and... Um, there's good instructions for it as well. I'm hoping there might be a sew along online or something like that. Um, it actually gives you uh, pattern pieces for average figures and large figures. Um, I haven't measured all of my husband's uh, bits that I need to measure for that yet, but um, I'm hoping that he will fall easily into one of those two. I haven't made shirts before, so this and the deer and doe will be completely new departures for me. Um, I'm slightly intimidated by the idea of making a shirt, but 
My motto this year is going to be just give it a go. Again, I'm sure with that there'll need to be at least one practice garment, if not more than. But I bought this fabric to make that shirt um, in the summer last year. I think it was from Like So Amazing, but I can't remember for sure. It's a brushed cotton twill. So it, it would be a sort of spring autumn weight shirt. So hopefully by the end of this year, I'll have figured that one out and maybe he can wear it for Christmas 2021. <laughs> The third top pattern I have got is the Somerset t-shirt by Maven Patterns. It's got a boat neck and I might end up changing the neckline slightly. I don't know, just at the moment it's so cold I, I can't envisage wanting to wear a boat neck. I know that will change when the weather warms up but it might be nice to have an option to do a slightly um, closer round neck anyway. I just love the look of the bishop sleeves that are gathered up into the cuff. Whether they'll suit me and they'll be practical, I don't know. But I have that, had that pan for a while and I really want to get on and make it. So I bought this fabric from Lamazi Fabrics. It is, oh, I'm not actually sure what the content is. It was a meat milk fabric, I think. Um, and I ummed and ahed over this fabric for ages. And by the time I thought I might like to buy some, there was only a metre of it left. And I think I thought it was a bit wider than this. Um, so I'm not actually sure I'll get the Somerset t-shirt out of this fabric, um, but it is non-directional. So once I've had a look at the pattern and figured it out, I'm hoping I might be able to do a bit of pattern Tetris and make it work. It's slightly unusual and it's not quite how it looked on screen when I bought it from the online shop, but, I do quite like it, it's quite unusual. It's very drapey, so that should work quite nicely for the sleeves. But I have got other jersey fabrics, so if I find out that this isn't enough to make that top, it doesn't really matter, I can make it out something else. Next up, I have got a couple of dress patterns. After my uh, bust up with the indigo dress by Tilly and the Buttons last year, um, I thought I might revisit that, but actually I'm not going to for now because I also bought a little while ago the Hinterland dress from So Liberated um, is very, very similar to the Indigo, except it's got, a, it's got a lower neckline at the front and it has also got a button placket, which I think, oh, I haven't printed the, the other images off on this, but I think you can possibly take the placket all the way down the front, or you can just cut the front on the fold and eliminate the placket entirely. So I thought I would have a go fiddling with this because again, no doubt it will need some pattern adjustments. Um, also, I just don't wear dresses that often. I don't know why I'm really attracted to dress patterns when I see them in shops and online. Um, but I have to be really honest with myself. I just don't wear dresses that often. I'm much more of a trousers and tops and when it gets to the summer shorts and t-shirts type person. So whether I will actually make this as a dress or whether I will um, crop the peplum part short and just do it as a top, I don't know. If I do make a top out of it rather than a dress, I have this fabric, which again, I think was from Lamazi Fabrics. I've washed it, so it's gone. I should have overlocked it before I stuck it in the washing machine, but I didn't. It is a, oh, now what is it exactly? It's a crinkle, it's a crinkle viscose, I think. I don't know whether you call that dob dobby with the spots on it. I don't know. Let's call it dotty. I don't know how it will work out with the kind of crinkle nature of it. Again, it was one of those things I saw online and quite like the look of. But I've only got a metre and a half of that. So I definitely won't get the dress version of the Hinterland dress out of that. But I could, as I say, I could crop it short to make it a top, which is, I'm probably more likely to wear sort of floaty top to wear with shorts and jeans and things. The other dress I would like to make, although again, it may well end up being a top, is the By Hand London Hannah dress. It does come with a top version as part of the pattern. Um, so I may well just end up doing that. It's just a wrap dress um, or top pattern. Now this isn't one that I sort of bought myself as it were. I went and did the bodice fitting masterclass um, at the New Craft House last November. Um, and that is run by Lisa Lex, who owns By Hand London. So you do your adjustments and your bodice fitting on By Hand London patterns, and then you get sent the pattern files afterwards. 
um and i just i think i pretty much got a good fit on the bodice for this one so um i thought it might be nice to make it up into a sort of dressy either a dress or just a really nice top um that i can use for going out when we're allowed to go out again whenever that might be um so i have this crepe fabric which uh is it says ab so i'm assuming that means it's an atelier brunette crepe fabric i bought this from guthrie and garney quite a while ago with the megan nielsen darling rangers dress um which i haven't made and i'm not quite sure i like that pattern so much anymore so i don't know whether i ever will um make that one up in the end or whether i'll end up passing it on to somebody else but um there's definitely enough fabric to make the top version of the by hand london hannah um in this because i've got what's it say here yeah i've got two and a half meters of this fabric it's just a crepe um i just think it's a really lovely color and it feels beautiful and soft and i think it will drape really nicely for that pattern so that will be that again i will definitely need to make at least one mock-up which sounds strange i know because i've done the fitting masterclass on the bodice part but we did that in um calico fabric so it's quite stiff and I can't imagine I would actually ever make the pattern in that kind of fabric. So I would definitely want to make it up in some sort of drapier fabric to make sure that I'm happy with the fit before I cut into this gorgeous stuff. So the last three patterns on my list are all trouser patterns. And the first of those is by Helen's Closet and it's the Avery leggings. I've got a couple of leggings patterns knocking around, but... Um, I like the look of these ones because they've got a really good high waisted option and I think that will suit me quite well. I bought ages and ages ago from Fabric Godmother this um, lycra. It doesn't necessarily feel the same as like leggings that I've got already that are sports leggings but it will certainly work well to make the pattern up to see what the fit's like in the first instance and hopefully it will um, serve well as sort of sports leggings I don't know whether I'll make them cropped or ankle length I've taken to cycling quite a bit at the moment so it'll be useful to have another pair of trousers to wear when I go out on my bike but if it is a successful pattern I'm also planning to make some pairs up in um cotton jersey or viscose jersey just to wear um in the summer like underneath tunics and stuff like that my eighth pattern is another Helen's Closet, as it turns out. It is the Winslow Clots. So I bought this pattern last year and didn't get around to making it, as usual. Um, I really like the look of these. I don't know whether I'll make them as sort of short length or possibly three quarter length ones. I've got this viscose fabric. Now this probably isn't really very practical for this pattern. But I'm kind of hoping that it'll certainly work as a toile version for these. Um, it's just, it's very light and very floaty and probably not suited really to making bottom weight garments. But I just think it's really nice. It was just a remnant that I bought from CNH Fabrics in Guildford. I'm not even sure that that shop is there anymore. And if it is, it certainly isn't open at the moment because shops aren't open. Um, but yeah, there's definitely enough of that there to make at least the shorts version so I can try the pattern out and see. Again, I just really like the um, the pleat detail on these because my waist to hip ratio is quite large. Um, this sort of negates, I'm hoping, a lot of the tricky fitting that you might have to do for a more fitted garment around the hips and stomach and all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping they won't be too difficult to fit. And finally, I have a choice of two because I just can't decide which I would rather tackle. It may well be that I end up doing both or neither. We'll see. So I've got, I've talked about these before. I've got the Made by Jack's Mum Heyday Dungaree pattern. Um, I actually really recently tried on some Lucy and Yak Dungarees. Um, if you don't know what they are, they are a relatively new, I think, company in the UK um, and they seem to have become quite iconic in terms of the shape of the dungaree. It's basically pretty much exactly what the heyday dungarees are. They don't have any 
fastenings or closures on the side so they just pull on dungarees with these long straps that you tie through loops um, to tighten the straps um, and I tried I, I ordered some and tried them on and I just found weirdly because I'm quite short I'm just under five foot four I found the rise from the crotch to the top of the bib really short so the kind of top of the bib came to there um, and it just wasn't very comfortable so I'm hoping that I can play with this pattern and come up with something a bit better that fits me a bit better than that um, from that point of view and also possibly a little bit better fit on the hips so there's that option and I think I've showed this fabric before this was a cord that I bought from Felicity Fabrics last year the other option is the ginger jeans by closet core patterns um sorry i've got the old patterns it says closet case but they are now closet core patterns um again amongst the sewing community a really well-known pattern um if i was to make these i definitely would do the high-waisted version and actually probably what i'd do is the slightly less skinny fit leg mainly because uh, my calves are actually quite big Quite a while ago, I bought this fabric from, I think it was from Fabric Godmother. Um, I've got one and a half metres and it's not actually very wide. Um, it is a stretch denim, although it's not really stretchy. So I'm not quite sure whether that will fit the requirements. So if I was to make that, I'd probably use this as a toile because I can't see myself using this fabric for anything else because I've probably not got enough. Um, so that would do for making a toile and I envisage that I would need to do quite a bit of fitting with that. If you've got good ideas for all the extra bits that you need for jeans, like top stitching, thread and all that kind of thing, um, if you've used them yourself and you can recommend a particular brand or anything like that, do let me know. Um, yeah, there's just gonna be a lot of fitting to do with this and that is why I haven't really tackled it before now so that's a bit of a cheat really isn't it because it's sort of a make 10 but I, I can't imagine that I will get both of those things made up anyway I'm hoping that having a make nine will just give me a little bit of focus um, and if I don't make everything up I'm not going to cry about it at the end of the year um, it may well be that I end up abandoning it because I get my teeth into something else and that's fine if that's what doing this process achieves for me I'm happy with that so there we are, that's my Make 9 2021. Do let me know down in the comments um, if you've got a Make 9 planned and what, um, what you're planning to make, whether you've got any of the same patterns on your list. Um, if you've got any thoughts about that broderie on glaze fabric, let me know. Also jeans, um, haberdashery stuff. And also actually, if you have bought some jeans, um, some denim fabric, that you've made the ginger jeans with that you'd really recommend from somewhere that still has it please let me know because um, it would be good to get something in so that I know I've got the perfect fabric to make the jeans out of once I get to that stage if you've enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't and you would like to see when my next video comes out thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time bye